Hello. I'm Ryan McCrary, owner of McCrary Financial Solutions and author of Mind Over Money, How to Think Like an Investor and Take Care of Business First. Uh, I'll give you all a few minutes to come in. Uh, it's going to be another Q&A session. <clears throat> uh, we're going to go to the questions that we that were submitted prior to this meeting. Uh, and then uh, if you guys have any other questions, uh, you can put them down on there. Um, how you doing, baby girl? Um, okay, so now we live on Facebook too. <clears throat> so shout out to Facebook. We live on YouTube and Facebook. Again, uh, I am Ryan McCrary, CEO of McCrary Financial Solutions and author of Mind Over Money. Shout out to everybody on YouTube and everybody on Facebook. Uh, hope y'all are doing well. So it's another Q&A session. Do me a favor, put some likes up, some hearts up. Uh, some shares. We need y'all to share this out uh, because this is an important conversation. I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, Derek, what's going on? Kane you got the wrench. So we got the moderators in the room. If y'all trolls want to play, you get your head's getting chopped off. Uh, so again, do me a favor. If you watch on replay, type replay down in the chat. Type your name and where you're from. Uh, also, if you have a business, put the name of your business and uh, the link to your website. Uh, hit the like button early. Yes, hit those likes, those shares, all those comments, because that's how we beat the algorithm uh, is by liking and sharing and commenting. So again, this is another financial Q and A session. Um, so like I said, we're going to go to all the first questions that were submitted. About three, four questions were submitted prior to tonight. Also, if you have any other questions, please drop them in. Uh, anything you want me to cover, business wise, you know entrepreneurship wise if you start a new business and you need help getting customers if you're looking at a stock and you know you want a second opinion on it whatever the case may be please put that in now so the first question that was submitted was my good brother Derek Williams so <clears throat> he says could you give a brief history of the stock market who were Dow and Jones I heard that currently there was only one black run on the floor of the stock market to execute trades. What can you tell us about her? It's my understanding that Wall Street really took off trading people that look like you and I. Not good. So that's a great question. Thank you. Um, how did you know that you wanted to be a black financial investor? Thank you. That is a great question. We will get to that question in a minute. Thank you. Keep the questions coming, y'all. So to answer Derek's question first, so brief history of the stock market, who were Dow and Jones? Uh, so if you're familiar with the DJA or Dow Jones Industrial Average, it's one of the indexes, just like the uh, 500 index uh, and the S&P 500. I'm sorry, the S&P 500, the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ. So uh, this was originally started by uh, Charles Dow and Edward David Jones. This is not the person who started the company, Edward Jones, if you're familiar with Edward Jones, that's a completely different company. So it's Charles Dow and Charles Jones. Charles Dow was born around 1851, and they hooked up, I think they got together around the 1880s, something like that, when I was doing a little research. Um, and they, uh, when originally, before they started the Dow Jones Industrial Average, they started a newspaper. So it was a newspaper that they wanted to basically just do financial reporting and they wanted to give like a non-biased point of view on the stock market and the markets. They actually were the founders of the Wall Street Journal. That's just something I didn't really know either. I never knew uh, exactly who founded the Wall Street Journal. Uh, so the Wall Street Journal was not originally founded by Charles Dow and Edward Jones, the original Dow Jones Industrial Average people. That was started, uh, the Wall Street Journal was started by them and it's still around today. Um, so after they uh, founded the Wall Street Journal, they founded the Dow Jones Industrial Average around, I think like 1889 or something like that. They founded the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And what they did was they got the, like the top 12 companies on the stock market at the time. They were like a rubber company. I think it was like... Uh, some other type of company, oil company, especially like, you know, around that time, it was like big on oil, big on um, rubber and stuff like that. So they got the top 12 companies, the top 12 companies um, on the market. 
trying to turn the comments on. Okay, the top 12 companies in the market, and they would get the closing stock price for each day and divide it by 12. So that's the original history of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I think that's a good little history lesson just to know, like if you turn on MSNBC or CNBC and you see um, and you see people talking about the Dow Jones Industrial Average, now you can know like exactly where that comes from. Uh, his second question was about the only black person or black woman who works on the um on the floor of the stock exchange and her name is what is her name her name is lauren simmons so she's the first black woman to work on wall street uh i think she started around 2008 something like that and she's only like 23 years old so that i think is great um, we need, of course, more people on there, but shout out to her being the first black woman on Wall Street, 23 year old. I think she went to a college called K Kenesha, Kenesha State, something like that. I think that's the school she went to, but uh, we definitely need more of her. He also says uh, he understands that Wall Street uh, really took off by trading people like you and I. Yeah, I heard. The stock market was started from slavery. Now, when I was doing research and I was, you know, reading some things, I didn't see them talk about that. Um, but I've heard like Dr. Claude Anderson and other people talk about that. So um, I believe them. But when I was like doing like a lot of research and stuff, it didn't say uh, specifically that the uh, stock market was started from slaves. But I actually heard that is how it started. Um, all right. Derek has another question. Uh, yeah, I'll get to all that in a moment. I'm just going to go to the questions that were already submitted. Okay, so if you're just coming on, uh, we're having another financial Q&A session where you get a chance to ask me any financial or business question. I charge hundreds of dollars for consultation. So this is your opportunity to ask me any question for free, any burning question. Anything that you think will help you achieve more financial freedom uh, or make more money in 2019 and beyond, this is your chance to ask it. Uh, if you're on Facebook, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the share button, <clears throat> put some comments down. I ain't seeing y'all comments. Uh, last time I was on here, I couldn't even see the comments that people was commenting. Um, so if you're on Facebook, please uh, drop some comments in so I can see y'all comments if y'all are dropping any on Facebook. Um, so shout out to everybody on YouTube, Rob, Elliot, Derek, Ryan, Khadijah. <clears throat> shout out to everybody on Facebook and YouTube. Okay, so again, if you're on Facebook, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the share button, uh, put your comments down, any uh, financial or business question that you have. So the next question, uh, let me go to it. The next question was, yeah, Rob. Uh, uh, yeah, it was Rob. Uh, okay, so he says you put your you put most of your question in the subject line of the email, so it's just a little bit harder to read. But let me see if I can get to it. So it says I have a question about leveraging equity in real estate. When you use the equity on a property to acquire another property, is that another loan you're taking out? Or is it used like a credit card? For example, I buy a home at 100K a year, it's worth money. Thank you, that's a good question. Now, let me just say, first of all, I'm not a real estate expert. Um, I'm not an expert in real estate. But I will say, uh, if you have equity in a property that you own and you wanna take money out, that is usually called a uh, home equity loan or like a HELOC home equity line of credit. And then usually you just pay that back. So it is a loan, you know, if you take equity out, of your property and you want to use it to buy another property or whatever that is usually seen as a loan but you're paying it back when you pay your mortgage so i hope that answers your question rob uh let me know where i can clarify more like i said i'm not a real estate expert but i believe that if you have some equity and you want to take out a home equity loan or something like that you can do that but uh it still is a loan and usually it's just paid back while you're paying off your mortgage so let me know if that answers your question. Uh, okay, you're welcome. Um, okay, so we got another question by Jim Hatcher. Shout out to Jim Hatcher. 
He says, hey, Ryan, I had a call with the rep from the Yellow Pages to review my listing for my mobile notary business. She explained to me that as far as their system showed, my business ranks high in Google, doesn't have much of a presence on some of the other search engines, such as Yahoo, for instance. She tried to upsell me on a listing maintenance service they offer for 60 bucks a month, which is not a lot of money. That would supposedly list and align me with all 60 major search engines, making sure my info was consistent across the board and run everything through the Thrivy app. I don't know what that is. Do you think that's a good deal? I've recently decided to do my notary business full time. Congratulations. And I want to make sure I'm putting myself in the best situation to make sure it works. I spent the money on a good website and all of that. And my listing ranks two in Google in my city, Chattanooga. But the phone doesn't ring enough for my liking. That is a very good question. Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Jim. So I would say, number one, I'm not big on SEO. You know, people always talk about SEO, which is search engine optimization. Um, I'm just not real big on it, you know, in Google search. You know, people, of course, are still Google searching. People still run Google ads and stuff like that. But Google ads are nowhere nearly as, as effective as they used to be, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Um, so I would say if you're really, you know, my recommendation for getting clients and, you know, getting your, uh, your, your business in front of people to try to get more clients is Facebook ads. I'm real big on Facebook ads and Instagram ads because the cost of attention, the price to get in front of someone is a lot cheaper than it is, uh, on other platforms that are kind of oversaturated now, which Google AdWords can be considered. Um, but I will say that. 60 bucks a month is not a lot of money in the advertising space 60 dollars a month is basically like nothing so you know i wouldn't i don't think it would hurt to give it a try just to see uh because you know i can say with facebook ads you don't have to spend at least 500 a month and that is low if you spend 500 to a thousand a month on facebook ads that's still very low, but that still you know will give you a good presence on you know if your ads are working or not if you can scale up uh, is, you know, really hard to do anything, to advertise anything for 60 bucks a month. So maybe give it a try and just see, you know, one notary call would definitely cover that. So, you know, I would definitely give it a try and just see. Uh, but at the end of the day, when it comes to advertising and trying to get customers and leads for your business, I'm big on Facebook ads. I'm big on Instagram ads. I'm big on email marketing uh messenger marketing maybe text message uh marketing stuff like that um our uh, jim says yeah that was the thrive thrive app okay thrive app yeah um so yeah i hope to answer your questions jim uh if you want to if you need any help uh advertising stuff like that <clears throat> if you need any help advertising um, you know, shoot me a, shoot me another email and we can set up a session. Um, you know, I can help you with any type of digital advertising when it comes to Facebook and build them custom audiences and lookalike audiences and acquiring more leads and see how many leads that goes to conversions and stuff like that. If you need any help with that, just shoot me another email. We can schedule a session. But um, I don't think, you know, 60 bucks a month uh is you know that won't hurt so i would try it but um like i said you know seo is my opinion is kind of something of the past i'm real big on just facebook ads and instagram ads to get in front of your customers um so those were all the questions that were submitted prior to today uh if you just came on my name is ryan mccrary ceo of mccrary financial solutions and author of mind over money how to think like an investor to take and take care of business first you can get a copy at mindovermoneybook.com. That's mindovermoneybook.com. If you're on Facebook, put some hearts up, put some likes up. Uh, please put some shares up. Um, let me know uh, that you're tuning in. If you have any other questions on Facebook, feel free to uh, feel free to put them in. My bad, y'all. I'm trying to fix this phone. Okay. So, again, if you're on Facebook, uh, put some likes up, put some hearts up, put some comments down. Any financial or business question, I will answer uh, until we get out of here tonight. Um, okay. So, let me see. 
let's go on YouTube. So first question was my beautiful daughter, Mariah Khadija. Everybody give her a big shout out. She's in the comments. She said, Dad, how did you know that you wanted to be a black financial investor? That's a great question. Uh, I didn't know until I started working at Vanguard. Honestly, I mean, I always heard about the stock market, but I just didn't know anything about it. You know, I didn't know how to invest. I didn't know, you know, you only go off like stuff that you hear from people that don't really know no better. So I just didn't know. And then once I worked in that company and then I saw how much money people were making, I saw the simplicity of the stock market. So that, that was what it was for me. Like once I really got into these accounts and started having conversations, I seen how easy it was to invest. And that's why I was like, why don't our people know about this? I was like, it's literally as easy as you check your bank account. That's how easy it is to invest in the stock market. So once I seen literally how easy it is and if times were hard, you can take money out and, you know, all the different things you could buy and how the different accounts worked. Once I seen all that, I was like, this stuff is easy. Like it's a no brainer to become an investor. And that's why I'm spreading the message of other people becoming investors because it's just so easy. Uh, Derek says, question, I feel embarrassed. Did my coworker ever get back to you? He was, he has a power line, but I don't hear Ryan McCurry's name anymore, but he did suggest I give him a play. Hmm. I ain't heard from him. So, you know what I mean? Whether you want to give him a play or not, that's up to you. But I ain't heard from dude. Um, I hope he's doing well. Like I said, I was just trying to help. You know what I mean? But uh, I can definitely not talk to people who are not serious. So I'm telling people right now, if you send me an email, if you message me anything, but you're not serious, don't respect a reply. Don't expect any sympathy. You know, don't expect anything. I can only deal with people that are serious. That is why uh, I'm about to start raising my prices on consultations because I can only talk to people that are serious. It's something in our community that is really a pet peeve of mine. I'm seeing people want to start businesses and talking about business, but they're not serious. They're not putting the kind of money up that it takes to really build a business. They're not trying to make the sacrifices that it really takes to build a business. They're not trying to do the things that really takes to build a business. They just want to play around. So that's why, you know, listen, I can't play around. My time is very valuable. So if you are serious, you can email me at customer service at McCrayFinancialSolutions.com. That's customer service at McCrayFinancialSolutions.com. Okay, so let me see. Uh, okay, Rob, I saw that piece of deal on her. Yeah, that was a very good piece. Um, <clears throat> let me just see one moment. <clears throat> uh, Derek says, I can't give him a play. I'm embarrassed. Yeah. I mean, listen, it's all good. Uh, it's just, you know, it is what it is. So, uh, uh, let me get back to the chat. Uh, one second, y'all. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, all right, let me get back to the chat. My bad, y'all. Bring it up to Hangouts. Okay, all right. Uh, all right, Jim says, cool, because I do have a Facebook business page. Yeah, okay, yeah. If you have a business, Facebook business page, that's great. So you just got to, uh, I just got to show you how to start running ads through Business Manager, and you can track, you know, the, how many people you reach, you can track your clicks, you can track purchases, you can track, you know, video views, all that type of stuff, depending on what type of ad you want to run. Uh, yeah, Facebook ads are so revolutionary. You know, if you have a business and, you know, you're not running ads, you are missing out on a huge opportunity. Why? Because the cost to get in front of someone is so cheap. Literally with, you know, a hundred bucks, you can get in front of 10,000 people, like, you know what I mean? So then if you want to, you know, put $500, $1,000 up, uh, you can literally get in front of hundreds of thousands of people as opposed to paying millions of dollars for a TV ad that nobody's probably going to see because most people are binge watching Netflix and stuff like that. So um, I just strongly suggest <clears throat> people start, you know, 
putting money aside, getting a budget, start running ads, uh, start using that to acquire leads and turn them into customers and have them keep it coming back after they become customers. <clears throat> All right, so Amber Scissorham on this says, and you are yes. I don't know what you mean by that, but um, <clears throat> okay. So again, <clears throat> if you're just coming on, I'm Ryan McCrary. We're having a financial Q and A session. We went over the history of the stock market, how it was started, how the Dow Jones Industrial Average was started back in the late 1880 something around that time. How the Wall Street Journal was started. How the first black woman on the stock exchange. Her name is Lauren Simmons. Only 23 years old, very beautiful sister. Um, <clears throat> uh, first black woman ever to be on the floor of the stock exchange. We talked about that. We also talked about real estate. So if you're thinking of, you know, if you have some equity in a house and you take money out, usually that's a, a home equity loan or home equity line of credit <clears throat> that you can use. But it's considered a loan and you just pay that back while you're paying your mortgage. And then the last question we got uh, prior to the night was, about basically SEO, search engine optimization, because these people always try to get you on a call. They try to sell you stuff. They, you know, they want to get you the best listing. And I'm like, listen, in 2019, I'm not worried about SEO listings. In 2019, like I'm definitely not trying to advertise on Yahoo. Like I'm, you know, Google. Okay, people still do Google searches, but I'm definitely not trying to uh, advertise on Yahoo. I'm not trying to advertise on Bing. Like I'm not trying to advertise on stuff like that. I'm trying to advertise where most of the people are. The advertising today is not a lot different than how it used to be 50 years ago. It's just the platforms are different. 50 years ago, uh, 50 years ago, were what, three, four stations? CBS, ABC, NBC, and I think that was it back then. Now, it's the same thing. It's just on different platforms. So instead of CBS... NBC and ABC, it's Instagram, it's Facebook, it's Yah, it's Instagram, it's Facebook, it's YouTube, you know, maybe LinkedIn and Twitter and stuff like that, just like Fox and, you know, other stations. So again, it used to be ABC, NBC, and CBS. Now it's Instagram, it's Facebook, and it's YouTube. So like I said, advertising hasn't really changed. It's just the platforms are changing. And the difference is, the difference is back then, Mike, what's going on? Uh, the difference is back then there were gatekeepers. So there were people that you had to go through. It wasn't just as easy to get an ad on NBC. You couldn't, it wasn't that easy to get an ad on ABC. But now I can show you right now how you can get an ad on Facebook up and running in about 15 minutes. You can literally get an Instagram. I got an Instagram ad running right now that's actually doing pretty well. And I set that ad up in about 20 minutes, like literally. So now, you know, as people are scrolling, people are scrolling, just like people are flicking on the TV. Now everybody's scrolling, everybody's on their phone and your ad can be right in front of those people. You don't have to ask anybody. Uh, need help with my FB business page. Okay, uh, please do me a favor. Send an uh, email to, uh, let me put it down. Customer service at McCrayFinancialSolutions.com. Uh, I'm gonna put it down, or one of the moderators, you can put it down. Customer service at McCrary Financial Solutions. That's long, y'all. <laughs> Dot com. All right. So, uh, yeah, customer service at McCray Financial Solutions dot com. Amber, if you need help with your Facebook business page, I can definitely help you. Uh, I've been building my page up. Like I said, I got some ads running as well. Thanks, Derek. Go to, uh, yes, please send an email. Customer service at McCray Financial Solutions dot com. Customer service at McCray Financial Solutions dot com. Uh, are most trades executed online for the most part? I mentioned the black female runner because I heard the floor 
of the exchange is there as opposed to what it looked like in 1988. Yeah, I, I would say so. I would say probably most of the trades do happen online. Uh, or, you know, maybe through like the app or something like that. Like I use the Vanguard app. I use the, uh, I don't really use the TD Ameritrade app. I do that like on the computer. But every single trade I place for the most part is online unless I need to call in if there's an issue or I have a question about something. I'll call in and have the broker on the phone do the trade. But mostly all of the trades I do is online. So I would, uh, I'm willing to bet that, you know, majority of the trades do happen online. <laughs> Uh, Jim says, yeah, I definitely need help with the FB ads because I've tried to look into learning it on my own, but it's been confusing to me. Shit is like Martian trigonometry. Yeah, I, I ain't gonna lie. It took me it took me about two years to figure out Facebook ads. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I'm talking about like running ads, spending 500 bucks and you don't make no money from that. You know what I mean? And learning from people, taking trainings, in-person events, all that stuff. So it took me about two years, but now I know I'm like the back of my hand. So what I can do is I can shorten the process for you. That is what my job is. That's what my goal is. My goal is to make your journey a lot easier and a lot shorter uh, because I already went through I already went through learning, uh, you know, trying to figure it out months and months and years of, you know, trial and error. So I want to make the process so much easier for you. So, yeah, I can definitely help you with ads. I mean, like Facebook ads, like it's so like I said, it's so crazy. The price of attention is so cheap. And you can, you know, advertise and, you know, it's so much different than radio and uh, TV and stuff like that. Because it's like radio, they always talk about, oh, we reach way more people than social media and we do this and that. But it's like, OK, on Facebook, though, I can build audiences around so much different stuff that you can't do on radio. I can build audiences around so much stuff that you can't do on radio. What I mean by that? On Facebook, I can I can market or advertise to people that like my page, people that have interacted with my page, people that, you know, interacted with a certain post on my page. So if you're watching this video on Facebook, I got the pics on you. I know exactly who watched the video. I can know if you watched 25% of my video. I can know if you watch 75% of my video. If you only watch half of my video, I can get all of that data and I can see and I can run ads right to those people. I, you know, it also allows you to do run ads to lookalike audiences, which means everybody who likes my page on Facebook, I can have Facebook create an audience of another 2 million people that look exactly like the 4,000, 3,000 people who already like my Facebook page. And that's just scratching the surface on the things you can do with Facebook ads. So um, that's why I'm like, listen, if you listen, if you got a, a budget, put a, put a budget together and let me help you out because, you know, you can literally get in front of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people uh, at a really cheap price as opposed to how it used to be in the few, in, in the past. Uh, the customer service at McCray, yeah, no, the thanks, Derek. Um, best way for beginners to invest 10000 Thank you also. I said buy a home. I say buy a home. Yeah, uh, I mean, it really depends on, it really depends, you know, that question, people ask me those questions all the time, like, if you had an extra 5000 or 10000 what would, you know, what, what's a good investment? That's really a subjective answer. It's really a subjective answer, it's, you know, really no one answer, because it really depends on what your goals is. If you do not have any real estate, if you don't own any properties, then yeah, I mean, I think buying a home is definitely a good investment. But if you already have some real estate and you don't own any stocks, I would say maybe putting that into a mutual fund and then contributing every month, building up compound interest, you'll see how fast that turns into 50,000 in maybe, you know, five to 10 years. Also, you know, if you don't have a business, I know so many business opportunities with $10,000 could take you right to six figures, you know, in maybe six months. You know, just by spending that ten thousand dollars, you spend ten thousand dollars on the right Facebook ad, that might make you a millionaire, literally. So, you know, it really depends on what your goals are. Uh, but I would say, you know, the main thing is with any investment, I would just say be diversified. You know, if you got ten thousand and that's all you have is ten thousand, I uh, maybe probably wouldn't put that all in just one investment. All uh, right, digital marketing facts. Yeah, like listen, I, I I can go hard on digital marketing. Like I love digital marketing now. 
Um, so listen, I can I can really, really go deep on digital marketing for those that want to listen, those who are interested, those that want to learn, those that want to use it to their advantage as far as building a business. Uh, I can definitely help with uh, anything related to digital marketing. All right. So Derek says, speaking of the reach, what is the farthest customer you gave a consultation on? For example, has someone you work with came from New Zealand or any other distant land? Um, probably London. I ain't get anybody from New Zealand yet. I'm hoping that happens. But I think London was the furthest person I've done a consultation to. Uh, it's always tricky with like the time difference. I think it's like maybe five or six. I think they're maybe five or six hours ahead of us. So that was the only uh, that's the only tricky part about that. But uh, I think London's probably the farthest. Okay, when Amber made that comment, the first thing I thought was diversification. Yeah, definitely, definitely diversification. Diversification is key. Um, yeah, that's what I would say. You know, if you got ten thousand bucks and that's all you have is ten thousand bucks, which is good, nothing wrong with that. Um, only thing I would say is I probably wouldn't put all that into just one investment like people all the time you know they save all this money for a house they put all this money into a house you know to be a you know homeowner or get a single house which is good but at the same time it's like if you're trying to build real wealth putting every penny you have into just buying a house a single house or you know even a house that you can't rent out and stuff like that uh that's not the best way to build wealth because you're putting all your uh, money into one investment. And I mean, technically speaking, they say if your house, you know, is just like your residence where you lay your head at, that's not necessarily seen as an asset. An asset is usually something that puts money into your pocket uh, as opposed to something that, you know, takes money out. Um, so I see a few people, uh, more people coming on Facebook. Uh, if you're on Facebook, put some likes up. Do me a favor, please share. Share this on your page, your business page. Share it in the Facebook group, whatever the case may be. YouTube is popping. We got the comments rolling. Where y'all at on Facebook? I, I don't know where y'all at. Uh, y'all, y'all slacking today. Facebook is usually lit. Uh, so what I need y'all to do is like. I need you to share. I need you to comment. That's how we boost the algorithm. Because I'm telling you, uh, you get in thousands of dollars worth of game for free right now i've been in meetings with multi-million dollar clients i've been in meetings with multi-million dollar business owners and one thing i can say is the difference between uh people who have money people who are rich or wealthy people who are self-made is really just behavior based it's mindset and behavior it's really nothing special you know, it's not like someone, oh, uh, you know, talking about selfie people, like no one didn't necessarily put them on or they're not special or they didn't get special treatment. They just live their life and they do things differently than most other people. The 99% of the people in the world that, you know, maybe don't have a lot of resources, all they do is just do things different. Uh, I thought when you buy a house, then you have equity. Uh, not necessarily. Uh, equity is the difference between what you owe on the house and what it's worth. So let's say you buy a house for 200 grand and you put down 20,000. So now you owe 180, you know, it's worth 280, it's worth 200. Uh, and you know, and you owe 180, you don't have any equity necessarily yet, but Let's say 5, 10, 15 years go by, and now the property's worth 250, but now you only owe 100. Now you have some equity because you have the difference on what you owe and what the property's worth. That is what your equity is. So uh, let me know if that uh, clarification is helpful, Trina. But yeah, usually equities built up once you number one are paying down on what you owe and uh, the property appreciating uh all right so derek on youtube says agreed grab some precious metals some stock cryptocurrency and the like never put all your eggs in one basket not good yeah definitely definitely and that that's what they talk about a lot in this book derek if you haven't read this book i definitely suggest you read this book 
Money Master of the Game, uh, Tony Robbins. Um, I would suggest, especially for you, Derek, uh, because, you know, he talks a lot about um, diversification, talks a lot about, okay, great, Trina. Uh, talks a lot about uh, what they call like an all weather portfolio or all seasons portfolio, which means no matter what the stock market is doing in 2008, when it's crashing, if it's in a bull market, bear market, whatever, talks about a portfolio that can weather all seasons or any storm. It can weather anything. And it talks mainly about diversification, you know, having, you know, money in domestic, domestic stocks and foreign stocks and precious metals and bonds and, you know, uh, uh, other type of uh, commodity stuff like that, and once you put them in one portfolio, over the history of time, uh, the portfolio has weathered all storms. So in 2008, when the market was losing 30, 40 percent, that might have only been down five percent or something like that. So I would strongly suggest you get that book. It's 700 pages, but it's well worth it. Uh, look into that book. Yeah, that, I'm, I'm telling you, man. Like especially for you, especially for you, that'll be a great book for you to read. He interviews like all the top investors ever. Like he, he interviewed John Bogle. He interviewed uh, David Swenson. He ever, uh, interviewed uh, what's his name? Uh, what's the what's the other person's name? I forget, oh, uh, Warren Buffett. But it was somebody else I was thinking about. Uh, I forget his name. But he he interviewed like Warren Buffett. He interviewed John Bogle. He interviews uh, David Swenson. He interviews Ray Dalio. That's why I was thinking about Ray Dalio. He interviews like all the top billionaire investors. Uh, he interviews all of them and he gets and says, okay, you're a billionaire, but what would you say to the people that don't have your type of resources? Like what portfolio would you pick? And also like, if you couldn't give any of your kids, he asked, he asked this question to every person he interviewed. He said, if you couldn't give your kids any money, just one portfolio for them to invest in, what would the portfolio be? And each one of them, Warren Buffett, all of them, to say the portfolio they would suggest their kids invest in if they couldn't give them any money. Uh, okay, so let me see. Uh, uh, Amber says, totally agree on diversification. Still getting my feet wet in a couple of things. I truly uh, give thanks. Okay, yeah. Uh, Amber, send me an email. Email customer service at McCrayFinancialSolutions.com. Customer service at McCrayFinancialSolutions.com so we can connect. Uh, never heard of that before. I know that have stocks that perform no matter what. Uh, Rollins Corporation or Waste Management are stocks that never lose out in the bear or bull market. That's great. That's great. But yeah, the uh, all weather portfolio is something that is good. Uh, just take a look into it, and uh, yeah, I guarantee you'll find it very interesting. So everybody on Facebook, uh, do me a favor, put some likes up, put some hearts up, put some comments down. Uh, if you're just coming on, we're having a financial Q&A session. We talked about the history of the stock market. The only one black woman who works on the stock exchange and a lot of other questions. Uh, also, if you haven't got my book, Mind Over Money, uh, you can get a copy at mindovermoneybook.com. That's mindovermoneybook.com. Someone please type that in on the in the chat on Facebook and YouTube, uh, mindovermoneybook.com. That's mindovermoneybook.com. So uh, y'all can put any last burning questions that you have. Uh, I love getting on here to talk to y'all just to, you know, answer any type of questions, financial business questions, uh, just based on my experiences. You know, like I said, you know, I've met a lot of entrepreneurs now. Um, you know, I know, you know, a couple of things now, especially online marketing secrets, um, all that type of stuff. So if you need help. You know, anything related to digital marketing or email marketing or uh, Facebook ads or sales funnels creation or automated email campaigns, all that type of stuff, feel free to contact me. And also on the financial side, uh, any general questions on investing or uh, stock market, anything like that, uh, I can definitely answer for you. All right. So. Yeah, mindovermoneybook.com, and I have it, and the matching t-shirt, yes. You can also get the merch. If you're interested in the Mind Over Money merch, we have t-shirts and hoodies. You see I'm rocking the hoodie right now. Go to ourblackapparel.com, ourblackapparel.com. Derek, please put that in uh, down there on the chat on YouTube, 
allblackapparel.com. You get any of the merch. We got the t-shirts. We got the hoodies. Uh, we got a whole bunch of other merch in there. We got some new stuff coming soon, too. I'm just waiting for to get some designs back. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you can go to ourblackapparel.com, ourblackapparel.com. So, again, if you have any last burning questions, please ask them now. Uh, I don't know exactly when we'll be doing another Q&A session. Um, try to do more of them, but my schedule is about to get a lot tighter. Uh, a lot busier consultation prices are going up just because my time is just so so limited so i would strongly suggest any questions you have you ask them now all right pudge beat says what do you think of chase new cryptocurrency jpm coin um i don't know i i i don't know i'm not sure i'm not familiar with that i didn't know chase had a new cryptocurrency so um i would just suggest just take a look at it yeah just take a look at it um so yeah, so if you're on uh, Facebook, uh, someone asked uh, what I think about Chase's new cryptocurrency, JPM, I guess it's JP Morgan uh, coin. So apparently Chase has a cryptocurrency and I did not know that they had that. So my thoughts on it are, I have no idea because I didn't even know they had it. So what I would do is I would just do research. I would just do research and see exactly what it is um before i you know did any type of investing the good thing about that you know chase is a formidable firm so it's not you know some mom and pops you know store down the street trying to sell cryptocurrency it's one of the largest banks in the world so uh that's something i would definitely look into all right thanks derek for putting the website uh all right, one more question this will be the last question then we'll get out of here uh i have one more question have you ever seen that the national debt clock. Those numbers are dizzying. I heard that every American citizen owes the government sixty thousand each. I have seen that, Derek. Um, but yeah, I mean, to me, it's like a ticking time bomb. Honestly, you know, the national debt is crazy. We owe China trillions of dollars and trillions of dollars of debt. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I've definitely seen the national debt clock, and I think it's crazy. But, um, you know, it is what it is. This is America. We got to keep pushing. There's still so many opportunities out here. So, we, listen, man, we got to keep pushing. Uh, all right, he says, I heard about the JPM coin. They're trying to funnel off a of Bitcoin to turn you away from the original market. A bunch of banks are about to run that scheme. Uh, yeah, they definitely are because the banks are scared to death of cryptocurrency. They're scared to death of the blockchain. Banks are definitely scared of the blockchain because it basically decentralizes banks. Listen, if we can transfer money between each other and we don't need a bank as a middleman, the banks is out of business. So the banks is like, listen, we need to do anything we can to stop this because we will literally be out of business. If we can just do peer to peer, uh, you know, giving each other money, if I can just give you money through Bitcoin without you know any type of bank transfers that would be revolutionary that would put the banks out of business uh all right so monet on facebook says how do we protect ourselves from upcoming recession um that's a good question so how to be recession proof you gotta invest in assets you know you gotta you know you gotta be in the position to control your own fate so you know that, that's what i would say you know if the recession, like me personally, like I'm personally not worried about a recession. You know what I mean? Like the, you know, the way I live my life and, you know, how I feel like I'm personally not worried about a recession because I know like, regardless of who's in the way of if anything, it might even help me. Um, because, you know, people like me are just waiting for opportunities, sitting on cash, you know, waiting to see different opportunities out there. Um, you know, I would just say, uh, Try to be in control of your own fate. So meaning, you know, uh, having multiple streams of income, not having all your income come from one source. If all your income comes from one job and the recession hits hard and they have to downsize or the government gets shut down or they don't have as much money to pay you, you know, then if all your money comes from that one source, then what? Then what? You know what I mean? But at the same time, if you have multiple streams of income, if you have multiple business ventures, if you have other things going on, 
you are in control of your own fate. So the recession probably wouldn't hit you as hard. You know, also, if you're consistently buying assets, the recession shouldn't hit you as hard. Another thing is during the recession, smart investors, you know, people who understand money at a high level, they understand recession is actually the opportunity. People who don't necessarily understand, you know, investing and money management at a high level, they freak out in a recession. When people like Warren Buffett see a recession, they're like, oh, that just means Apple's on sale. So in 2008, what hurt the African-American community is a lot of us weren't financially savvy. So we got out of the market at the time when that was the worst time to get out of the market. In 2008, if you lost a lot of money and you sold your stocks in 2008, you locked in those gains. You lost that money forever. But in 2008, if you say, I'm going to weather the storm, I'm actually going to put more money into the market. By now, you would have a lot of money that you're sitting on. So, you know, also in 2008, with the real estate market, a lot of, you know, properties got foreclosed. You know, a lot of homes were cheap. People who had the money snatched up a whole bunch of real estate at a discount. So all I would say is, just understand that, you know, understand, you know, uh, because, you know, a lot of us, myself, I'm guilty as well. You know, we're trained to look at a recession, you know, uh, watching the news. They want to scare us. They want to talk about how the economy is going to collapse. But like I said, me, I study wealthy individuals. I study millionaires, black and white or whatever color, not you know, definitely black millionaires, but I study other millionaires as well. And once you study them, you see that in the time of recession or depression, whatever the case may be, that is a perfect opportunity to buy stocks. That means Walmart's on sale. That means Apple's on sale. That means Amazon's on sale. You know, at a time when uh, there are a lot of foreclosure and a lot of properties, you know, are available, pennies on the dollar, that's a time to snatch up a whole bunch of properties. So I would say for a recession, uh, look for the opportunities because that could be a great opportunity for you to snatch up some assets and then 5, 10, 15, 20 years, you'll see how much those appreciate because every single recession in history has always recovered. All right. So uh, let me know uh, if that answers your question. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, all right. So Derek says, uh, let me go back up. Uh, scared of death and scared to look. They shook behind a blockchain. Good. Uh, Brock says good info. Yes. Uh, you're welcome. Recession could be a discount for most. Yeah, absolutely, man. Recession is opportunity. You know, I wish in 2008, I would have known that, uh, you know, I would have definitely took advantage of that. Uh, you're welcome. Yeah. In 2008, if I knew what I knew back in 2008, I'd probably be a millionaire by now. Like, honestly, uh opportunity zone your take on it if you have one uh what do you mean amber as far as opportunity zones and uh, uh, what, what, what i'm not sure exactly what you mean by that <clears throat> i heard dr watkins tell the story of a guy that bought shares of popeye chicken for four dollars in 2008 that dude is chilling today you judge absolutely absolutely the problem is that most of our folk we rather get the chicken than the stocks. And I'm like, no, let's get the stocks first. We can still get the chicken, but I want to get the stocks first. I want the stocks before I buy the Jordans. I want the stock before I buy the iPhone. I want the stock before I go to Walmart and then go to Walmart after I buy the stock. Uh, all right, great, great info. Thank you. Okay, so yes, yeah, it's about to be time to wrap, guys. So I hope this was helpful. Like I said, we'll be doing a lot more of these. If you want to get alerts via email, I did send a few emails out too. Um, <clears throat> I did show the email out too. Uh, I don't know what that inbox dollars. Uh, free money maker. Uh, please, I hope it's not no MLM scam or nothing like that, Derek. You might got to chop them when I'm playing. But uh, please don't come in here comment any type of get rich quick schemes, any type of, uh, like I said, any type of get rich quick schemes, any type of make money fast schemes. Listen, man, that shit don't work. Put the work in. Put the work in. Get money, you know, get rich quick schemes fade fast. 
true wealth is an accumulation process. So thank you. That's why we got the moderators on here. Uh, thank you so much, Derek. I might got to get another moderator as well. I'll be seeing people with that. Uh, I was watching who channel we watched earlier. I forget. It was like they had like three moderators on there. And they also had where people can like donate and stuff like that. Like, how do you get someone to donate? Like, y'all ain't got to donate to my channel. You know, I'm not real big on donations. Like, I'm the type is like, if you want to donate, just buy something. You know, people always say like, how can I support? How can I help? I'm like, just go in and buy something. Buy a book or buy some merchandise or buy a course for someone else. Where the case may be like, I'm not real big on donations and depending on donations. But I do see on a lot of YouTube channels, people have donations and stuff like that. I just didn't know how that worked. Derek or someone else, if y'all know uh, how that donation stuff on YouTube works, but I see people like donating a lot of money and I, you know, I'll start donating to other people's channels that need it as well. But, um, so yes, we about to wrap guys. So shout out to everybody on Facebook, everybody on YouTube. Thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, if you want to, um, start getting email notifications, you can go to financiallyliteratenow.com financiallyliteratenow.com and get the free course that I should put you on my email list so um, you can get alerts and everything every time I go live. Um, I'm told that once you get monetized and you get a super chat. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, once you get, okay, so the super chat allows you to, people doing, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I'm almost at monetization. I think I'm like halfway there. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to get there. Derek's channel was growing as well. Derek, I want to interview too, because listen, Derek is a prime example of what I be telling y'all. I be telling y'all, no matter what you do, no matter what profession you have, listen, anybody can create a brand on social media. There's so much opportunity out here. I'm telling you, I've seen Derek literally take his message and give it out to the world because YouTube allows you to do that. Social media allows you to do that. Facebook, Instagram allows you to do that. You have instant distribution. Instant distribution, whatever type of message you have for the world, everybody has a message for the world. No one can stop you from showing your message, from giving your message to other people. No one can stop you. So I've seen a prime example of Derek saying, listen, as a black man, as a conscious black man, as an investor, as a savvy investor, I have a message I want to give out to the world and he's been doing it. Now his channel is growing more than mine. He got more subscribers than me. Salute to Derek because he, you know what I mean? Like, this is a prime example of what I'm telling y'all. If you have a message or anything you want to give out to the world, go on Facebook Live, go on YouTube Live, start making videos, start making content. Let people know what your message is for the world and no one can stop you. Literally, his channel is growing more than mine. He got more subscribers than me and salute to him. I want you to get 10,000 subscribers. <clears throat> Check your email. I see the opportunity and it's huge. Uh, that super chat from what I heard sucks because of taxes. I see more people rock with Cash App. Oh, okay. So I heard. Okay. So yeah, I didn't know about that. Uh, listen, I'm going to put my Cash App down there if y'all want to donate. Uh, my Cash App is, what is my Cash App? I think it's like MFS something. I think it's MFS 87. Whoops. That's the wrong one. <laughs> Trying to type on this iPad. I think that's what it is. <laughs> but y'all hear me? Y'all ain't y'all ain't gotta send nothing. Like I said, I, I'm not big on donations. Like me personally, I'm like forget donations. I'm not I'm not big on like donations and no disrespect to people that do nonprofits. You know, that's just honestly, it's just not my thing. I would rather just be like, all right, if you want to donate, just buy something, buy a book, buy a course, buy buy some merchandise. Something like that. I'm not real big on donations. Uh, but yeah, I didn't know about the super chat and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, they probably do kill you on taxes. Probably fees too. But um, thank you all again for tuning in. I uh, hope this was helpful. Uh, again, if you want to have any other questions, you can email me. And I'm going to check your email too. Uh, email customer service at McCrayFinancialSolutions.com. Customer service at McCray Financial Solutions dot com. Uh, so I'm just recap. So tonight we talked about the history of the stock market, how the Dow Jones Industrial Average started. You know, the first black female to work on the stock exchange. <clears throat> we also talked about marketing and advertising for your business. We talked about digital marketing. We talked about uh, SEO. We talked about the importance of running Facebook ads. 
Uh, literally, you can get in front of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people for a fraction of the cost of what it used to cost back in the old advertising days. So all I'm saying is take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. We also talked about potentially an upcoming recession. <clears throat> but to me, a recession just means opportunity. The opportunity to buy stocks for pennies on a dollar, to buy real estate pennies at a dollar. So make sure our community is taking advantage of it because we lost so much wealth. We ain't have uh, much wealth anyway. But we lost so much wealth during the 2008 crash because we weren't financially literate, because we didn't understand the true nature of money management. So that's all I'm saying. So if a recession does come, make sure you are buying up stocks, make sure you're buying real estate, hold it. So when the, you know, when it, when it comes back, because you see since 2008, the stock market, the economy, everything has been on the upward trend. Ever since, literally since 2008, 2009, the stock market has been going up every single year. So all I'm saying is let's take advantage of it. So uh, if, that, if we have no other questions, uh, make sure if you haven't got a copy of book, my book, go to mindovermoneybook.com. That's mindovermoneybook.com. You can also email, send an email to customer service at mccrayfinancialsolutions.com. Customer service at mccrayfinancialsolutions.com. Uh, Derek said, I did a video, blew a bag, Lord Jesus, a woman blew $500 million. Well, I heard about that, but I didn't, like, I didn't actually look uh, deep into that story, but um, that's crazy. Someone blew five hundred million dollars. Like, <sighs> Lord Jesus, that's crazy. <laughs> all right, so uh, all right, plus I wish I got Netflix in oh eight. Yeah, listen, I, I wish I would have bought Netflix in two thousand eight. Like, I don't even know what it was trading at that time, but I know it's probably a lot lower than what it is today. So that's it for today, guys. Like I said, if you watch on replay, type this, type replay down, type your name, where you're from. You can also still put a comment in, put a question, and I'll come back and answer it. Anything you need help with. And lastly, again, you can email me at customer service at McCrayFinancialSolutions.com. Customer service at McCrayFinancialSolutions.com. Everybody have a great day.